Stop using the C word. Stop it. You know what I'm talking about. People throw around the C word as if they can guarantee it. But they can't. No one can. You know what word I'm talking about. Certainty. People love to use this word, this concept in their marketing. Those in politics and finance love it best. Vote for this candidate and you can have certainty about the future. Buy this financial product and feel your uncertainty vanish. Buy into this marketing message and you too can have certainty. But there's a problem. Certainty is easy to sell and impossible to deliver. We are going to examine three elements of the C word today. Why you should stop using the C word, when you can use the C word, and which is the better C word. So first, why you should stop using the C word. As humans, we crave certainty. We want to know what is happening and what will happen. But in finance, especially in financial planning and investing, we are looking toward the future, and the future is uncertain. If we need certainty about an uncertain future, those who profit from selling certainty will prey upon us. This is where life insurance products go beyond their expertise, right? So insurance is meant for high-impact, low-probability events. What are the chances I crash my car into someone today? It's not very high. What is the impact? Well, thousands and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in damages, probably maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. I should have auto insurance for that, right? It's not a very big chance that's going to happen, but it's a high probability. What are the chances that I die this year? Not very high. What is the financial impact of me passing away this year? Well, my wife and two daughters are without an income and the economic support that I provide. And so it's either going to be very stressful for them, for now a single mom, to then go earn and and put their kids in daycare and and try to manage a a household with no additional finances, or they're going to become a burden on others or both. So it's it's not a high likelihood, but it'd be a high impact financially if I were to pass away. So I better have life insurance, and I do. But eventually, some of that goes away, right? Properly planned, you don't need life insurance for your whole life. Financial situation may look better after one person passes away, not that we want them to for obvious reasons. But when you have a good financial plan, we'll do this all the time where people will have permanent life insurance products, whole life, universal life, variable life, whatever it is, index life, and it was sold to them at some point because they were afraid that, well, what happens if someone passes away? But a lot of times we'll, we'll illustrate it to them. The kids are gone. They have a lot of retirement saved up already. And we say, okay, so, so if, if we got rid of this, here's how much better it looks when you can put all that money that you put in the premium into something better. And when you can take all that money that's uh, you know much less than it should be, but all that money that's in the cash value and you do something else with that, here's how much better that looks over time. And if you were to pass away next year or the year after that or, or sometime before your no- normal life, we can show that too. What would happen to your spouse if you passed away early? And a lot of times for a lot of people who are properly planned, the answer is that the spouse looks better off because they still have all the retirement accounts. All that goes over to the spouse. They might lose a social security stream, but if they're properly planned, they now also don't have one more person dragging down expenses for the household. So it looks fine. You don't need the insurance anymore. You are self-insured. But insurance salespeople will stir up uncertainty around your death after your term insurance expires. What happens if you die at 65? What would happen to your wife? How will you pay for the funeral expenses if you passed away at even a normal age down the road? And they'll stir up all this uncertainty around what will happen. And therefore, you need permanent life insurance. Ka-ching! 
And that's the sound of that sales rep cashing in their commission check. Again, if you have proper planning, you can have answers to these. You don't need the uncertainty. What happens if your spouse dies at 65? Well, all their, all their retirement accounts come to you and you do this part of the plan and you look just fine. We don't need him financially. Well, how are you going to pay for the funeral down the road, even at, you know, 75, 80, 85, 90? You just pull it out of your retirement accounts, which are plump and full because you did good long-term planning and you're not going to be destitute by the time you get there. It's not a problem, right? What, 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 and think about this, right? This is where, again, insurance gets beyond its skis. What are the chances that I die this year? Not very high. That's why term insurance is not very expensive. But what are the chances that you die eventually? 100%. Insurance is supposed to be for high impact, low probability events. So if the probability is 100%, then it's not a low probability event. It's going to happen. And so you know that these policies must pay out and that they also must price these policies in such a way that makes them a bad investment because they not only have to pay that payout, right? When you eventually pass away, if you still hold the policy, which you probably won't, but if you do, they have to pay that out. And so they have to price that into how much they're charging on the policy. They also have to price in that massive commission that they're paying the sales rep to sell it to you. They have to price in the administration for all the underwriting and everything else that goes into managing the policy. And of course, they have to price in company profits. And so they have to price these things in such a way that make them a very bad investment for you and all to give you a sense of certainty around something that you weren't even uncertain about before you met them. But they stir up uncertainty, they stir up doubt, they stir up fear in you so that they can sell you, turn around and sell you the certainty. All right? It's like a cigarette that, you know, you go off the nicotine and that's why you crave a cigarette. And so you go back on it, it feels good, you, you satiate it for a moment and then eventually it's causing, it's, it's the cure to the very thing that, that's causing. Right? But then you have a different uncertainty that most people actually do have. Right? So you have some, some uncertainties that salespeople will stir up in you to sell you something but then there, I think there are some legitimate uncertainties that people have. And a very common one would be the uncertainties surrounding investing and the stock market. What will happen? Will your retirement come outlast your expenses? You, you could lose all your money in the risky stock market, right? So let's sell you some certainty with an annuity. We can guarantee you a retirement income you can't outlive. And so they'll take a, an uncertainty that you actually do have and then make it worse so that they can sell you the solution. And people who are desperate for certainty will place large portions of their life savings into products that will lock them into a flat income amid two or three decades of rising costs. In exchange for a fat commission check, the financial representative will be happy to sell you certainty in one area while completely ignoring all the uncertainty in other areas, namely the uncertainty around inflation and changes in income needs and all these other areas of life that are still uncertain. They'll take one uncertainty, your uncertainty about the stock market, and sell you something to solve that while ignoring the others. And you will pay a high price for this certainty. As Carl Richard says, certainty is easy to sell, but it is impossible to deliver. We live in an uncertain world and there's a certain amount of uncertainty that is irreducible. We cannot get rid of it. And if people are trying to sell you certainty, they're likely ignoring something else. We need to stop using that word. You cannot be certain about the future. Any attempts to be certain will cost you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars each year. You probably notice that I don't call on the insurance industry to stop selling certainty. I don't rail against them to knock it off because as long as there's a demand for certainty, someone will always be there to try and sell it. It's like trying to, to yell at criminals and tell them, that, hey, if, you know, if, if criminals would just stop being criminals, then we wouldn't have all this crime. That's, that's you know, yes, but that's just not going to happen. So there will always be insurance companies. There will always be shady salespeople. There always be people too that genuinely believe in their product and are not shady at all. They're just misled themselves as the blind leading the blind. So that will always exist and, and yelling at them and trying to get them to stop 
selling it is not going to work. My goal is always to educate and inspire people on mindsets to have and strategies to adopt and products to avoid. If we can teach you to be okay with uncertainty and reinforce that belief with other elements, which we'll discuss shortly, then you won't need to buy poor products. But we must be okay with uncertainty. We don't know what will happen in the future. No one does. Then that's okay. We'll create and follow the best plan we can for what we do know and what may happen. Which leads us to our second point. When you can use the C word. Because we talk a lot about belief in this podcast, especially when discussing positive outcomes on the other side of uncertainty. We don't know when it will turn out all right, but we believe that it will turn out all right. A wise author wrote these words in an immortal book 2,000 years ago. Faith, or belief, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. They weren't talking about financial planning and investing in the best businesses in the world, but it still applies. We don't know what will happen in the future, but we hope it will be better than in the past, as it has always been. Therefore, we are sure things will be better, even if we don't know when. We cannot see the future, but we can be certain that things will work out. We are not certain that the market will recover next month. We are not certain that we will live exactly to 90 years old and pass away peacefully in our sleep. We are not certain that nothing bad will happen to us. We are certain that when bad things happen, this too shall pass. We are certain that we can keep working the plan. How can it be any other way? Why would you invest or stay invested in the best businesses in the world when their values are falling if you didn't believe that it would work out? How can you see the value of your nest egg drop by 20, 30, or 40% and not panic if you were not certain things would work out? You couldn't. We must be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It is the only way to invest successfully and thus the only way to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. But perhaps there is a better C word we could use. So which is the better C word? Because we live in an uncertain world with an uncertain future, perhaps certain is not the best C word. Let's pick another. Confidence. You may not feel certain about the positive outcome, but you can still be confident. You can be confident in your financial plan. You can be confident in long-term trends. You can be confident in your planner. Now, certainly, pun intended, certainly it does help to have a plan. If your plan is to wing it and wander into the future with no roadmap and guide, you should feel uncertain. But if you are doing everything you can to encourage, if not ensure, a positive outcome, you can have confidence it will work. Some people's uncertainty comes simply from not knowing and not understanding. A Nobel laureate once said, nothing on earth is to be feared, it is only to be understood. People don't understand equity markets. They don't understand taxes and insurance. They don't understand how to retire. So here's a better C word for you. Clarity. You may need to get a plan. You may need to read a book, take a class, or work with an educational financial planner to help you understand your finances. The financial world is a lot less scary when you understand it. And you don't need a master's in finance. You simply need to know how and what affects you. Clarity can bring you confidence. How is that some people have confidence in their financial life and others in the same situation do not? Consider my classic example couples, Chuck and Diane and Bob and Sue. They are both in their early 60s, both have the same health, the same level of income and assets, and Chuck and Diane are confident in their retirement, while Bob and Sue are not. Why? Bob and Sue bought some financial products that they hope will help, but they have some lingering doubts. Chuck and Diane were educated through their finances and have embarked on a financial strategy 
they believe in. They have clarity around their finances and confidence in their future. Why? Here's the last C word for the day. Choice. Choice. Chuck and Diane have made a choice. They chose to be educated. They chose to invest the time and energy into working with a planner to figure it out. And they choose, present, ongoing, to reinforce their beliefs with positive messages and facts instead of listening to the constant drivel of the financial pornography network. Because that's key, right? This is not just blind hope. It, It has no basis to it. All of our belief, all of our faith in the future is based on positive facts, on real things that have happened in the past and indicators that we can see in the future. And you can choose to focus on those positive facts or you can continue to choose to focus on all the negative because the only thing the media will tell you is the negative. Chuck and Dan made choices and continue to make choices that give them confidence and, dare I say, certainty around their financial outcomes. You, too, can choose. You already are. If you are scared of the uncertainty in the world and afraid of investing or of what may happen to you, it's likely because of the poor choices you are making in terms of the media you are consuming. You are choosing to procrastinate on getting a plan. You are choosing to let life happen to you instead of happening to life. But you can make a different choice. You can make a better choice. Choose now to get clarity around your finances. Choose now to throw off everything that hinders your belief in long-term success. Choose confidence and reinforce that confidence. And if you ever need a shot of confidence, a boost of vitamin C against all the sickness of fear and uncertainty that plagues our world, then come back here. It's what we do. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership and has a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly Retire Mentorship magazine which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information, and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait, so join us now at retiremembership.com, where you can click in the link in the description, and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.